D E F G is a cyclic quad, right? So we have a cyclic quad, right? That's a key word because there's a few properties with regards to a cyclic quad. And then D E is parallel to G F. So we have D E uh, that is parallel to line G F. This is all the keywords we could extract from our question statement. So we shall be able to answer all the questions that follows only using these two keywords and some basics. What do you mean by some basics? Angles on a straight line, angles obtained by the same chord, and so on, right? And then the first question, 9.1.1, it says determine with reason the size of DGF. So is DGF. Uh, DGF is this angle right here. DGF. So let's go ahead and see if we can use the first keyword, which is cyclic quad. You will realize real quick that angle DGF should be equal to this angle E4 that is situated here, right? Because an exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to interior opposite. So we're going to go ahead and say that uh, angle DGF is equal to E4, right? But we know fully well that E4 is equal to 72 degrees. Where we see DGF is equal to E4, an exterior angle of a cyclic quad, right? Is equal to the interior opposite, and that is 9.1.1. So DGF is equal to 72 degrees and then now let's do 9.1.2 so 9.1.2 we're looking for the size of angle t so angle t is right here right it has nothing to do with the cyclic quad so we cannot use a cyclic quad and then it has nothing to do with these two parallel lines here right so there's no way you can use that too so now we have to go to the basics right uh, if you pay attention to angle t you will realize real quick that it is subtended by uh, line ef right it's subtended by the chord ef and then the chord ef it also subtends g2 g2 right so angle t should be equals to angle g2 because they're being subtended by the same chord they're in the same segment right so angles in the same segment angles in the same uh, segment so now all we need to do is determine the size of g2 right but we know that uh, g1 plus g2 is equal to 72 degrees that is just angle dgf right so g2 will be close to 72 degrees minus g1 which is 16 degrees if you compute that we shall get uh, 56 degrees so that is uh, 9.1.2 the size of angle t so now angle t is also 56 degrees because it is equal to uh, g2 right um let's move forward let's move forward and do 9.1.3 right so 9.1.3 is saying that let's find the size of angle g e f let me just clear up this sketch because it's starting to look messy now so we're looking for the angle of for the size of angle g e f so what is g e f uh, g e f is this angle right here right so let's see if we can use parallel lines directly to find the gef there seems to be no way to use parallel lines directly to find gef but then with that said we can say that f1 is equal to 72 degrees at uh, this angle here we can say that it is equal to 72 degrees uh, because it's alternating with uh, e4 right yeah because let's not forget that de is parallel to gf right so we can say that e4 is uh, alternating with angle f1 so we can say that f1 is equal to 72 degrees but then we know that g2 is equal to 56 so here we have 56 uh let me just use a different pen here we have uh, 56 
and then here we have uh, 72 right so it will be easy to find uh, GEF using the sum of angles on a triangle so we're gonna say that uh, GEF is equals to 180 minus 56 minus 72 the sum of angles on a triangle and if you compute that uh, you should get uh, the ang the size of angle GEF being equals to 52 degrees 